Greetings to all who care and dare to listen. This is John Lash. I present myself to the world as an author, a mythologist, a visionary teacher, with a particular spin in my CV. The spin is that I specialize in Gnosticism and in the wisdom and guidance that comes from the so-called Gnostics who were the genuine illumined teachers of the mystery schools of antiquity. So I present myself as a modern-day Gnostic. What I'm going to tell you in this talk is what a Gnostic from the past would tell you, here and now, right now, were he or she present to do so. What I'm going to tell you is the Gnostic view of the origin and purpose of COVID-19. To begin, I'd like to point out the significance of the date of releasing this talk. I'm releasing this talk on the Jewish holiday of atonement known as Yom Kippur. I've intentionally chosen this day so that those who listen to the words of a living Gnostic can also, if you choose to do so, observe the Holy Day of Atonement. In case you don't know about that event, I'll just explain to you briefly how it is celebrated by the Jewish people. The word Yom is like the word Yawn, and it refers, it's a Hebrew word that refers to opening your mouth as if you were yawning. But in fact, the purpose of the Yom in this celebration is to open the mouth in the way that, say, a seal opens its mouth when someone throws it a fish. Now, the fish, of course, is the kipper. Everyone knows what kippers are. They're salted fish. So the way that this high holiday is traditionally celebrated probably don't know this if you're not of the Jewish people. You haven't had the opportunity to be an insider in the ceremony, but I have used certain telepathic powers of remote viewing to see what they actually do on this occasion. They all gather together in a room with a large bucket of kippers. And then the most revered rabbis the leaders, religious and spiritual leaders of the community, stand around the bucket and all of the participants in the ceremony do the yom. They open their mouth like seals and the rabbis throw the salted fish into their mouths. And that is how they celebrate Yom Kippur. So as you listen to this talk, you can, if you wish, celebrate Yom Kippur, right along with them. Keep it in the back of your mind. The Day of Atonement is at hand. So, what does the Gnostic living today have to tell you about COVID-19? Is it a virus from outer space? Of course, the notion of the Earth being infected with a virus from outer space is nothing new, is it? Various science fiction scenarios, books and films, have played on that theme. One memorable example is the Andromeda Strain. Catchy title there, Andromeda. And in that scenario, that's exactly what happens. Somehow, an exobiological, 
extraterrestrial virus finds its way into the biosphere. And I believe, if I recall correctly, in that story, that it happens to be a lethal virus. And so the result is that it proceeds to wipe out the entire population, the human population, certainly. I don't know about other animals. Is it lethal to other animals or not? I don't know if that's in the scenario. But you get the point. Has this happened? Is this happening now? Has there ever been an instance when a lethal virus from outer space somehow got into the biosphere? Yes, there has been such an instance. Now, whatever you may think about Gnostics or teachers of the mystery schools, and I warn you that you have most likely been, been misinformed and misdirected concerning such people. Whatever you may think about them, it is a very great fact and, ir and an irrefutable fact confirmed by the surviving records from those Gnostics that they were the only people ever to warn humanity about this extraterrestrial infection. And they warned humanity in no uncertain terms. The operative term in their warning is the word archon. So what they said is that there is an extraterrestrial species that inhabits the solar system does not inhabit the entire universe, does not come from another star or another galaxy, but it is local. There is a local infestation of archons in the planetary system where the Earth is found. found. However, due to boundaries, and boundaries are everywhere in nature, boundaries are the rules and laws of nature, Due to boundaries, that archontic infestation originally remained in the extraterrestrial world, and it did not penetrate the human world, which is the planet Earth. But there was an event, there was a moment, and it was an historical moment, and Gnostics today have committed themselves to a deep study of exactly how this happened. It was an historical moment when the extraterrestrial archons vectored a virus into the human species. They injected a virus. They shot it into the atmosphere and they shot it into a target group a racial vector. It's important to know that Gnostic intel specifies that by penetrating the biosphere of the Earth with their virus, the Archons did not infect everyone on the planet immediately or simultaneously. And even today, the Archonic infection does not operate in everyone on the planet. It operates on those who are archontically infected only. However, due to the fact that the archontic virus has a mimetic property, mimetic means imitating, prone to imitation, it can spread itself by imitation even to those who do not have the infection biologically. And so those who are infected biologically 
will act in a certain way, the racial vector of the archonic infection, and then in turn, others who don't actually have the infection biologically will mimic or imitate their behavior. This is a peculiar property of the archonic infection, and I'm not making this up. You can find the terminology and the basic syntax that explains the mimetic quality, the mimetic character of the archonic infection in the surviving Gnostic materials. Due to this fact, the entire world eventually, and it's been about 4,000 years now since the archons succeeded in injecting the racial vector, Due to this situation, the infection has propagated itself in a particular manner. And this is nothing mysterious. It's nothing that is esoteric, nothing that is difficult to understand. Any person with a modicum of common sense and intelligence can see how it works. And I advise you to go and look into the medical phenomenon, the psychological phenomenon of Munchausen's syndrome by proxy. So in that case, you will find that a caretaker of a child, for instance, the parent of a child, finds that they get attention and that they can control the narrative of their life and the life of their child and everyone around them by getting attention as being a caretaker. So the caretaker is sick, psychologically sick, mentally ill. But the mentally ill caretaker then operates through Munchausen syndrome by proxy and they pretend that the patient, say the child, is sick. And so they pretend that the child in their care is sick and they even do things to make the child sick in order to conform with their narrative as a caretaker. This is exactly the case with the racial vector of that particular group of human animals who are infected with the archonic virus. They regard themselves as the caretakers of the rest of humanity. They are mentally ill. They are insane. They are murderously and criminally insane. And yet they succeed through that factor of the archonic virus, which is mimetic. They get others to imitate and copy their illness. So there is a Gnostic profile of the archontic infection, and I leave it to you to apply that profile to COVID-19. To continue, there are two points that need to be lucidly clear. First point is that the primary case of the archontic infection is due to a neural hack. According to the Gnostic intel, the archons wished to meddle in human genetics. They wished to modify the human genome. Does this remind you of anyone that you know in the world today? Anyone you've heard about? The original intent to crack into the human genome and meddle with RNA and DNA attributed to the archons is now being carried forward by the proxies and agents of the archontic infection. Do you see that? It's crucial to know that the racial vector of the infection are infected. 
But what is the nature of their infection? It is a neurological hack. They are neurologically infected. And that neurology, that neurological deviation, lays down into their genetics. So they have a unique genetic signature due to being originally neurologically hacked. If you go back and you look closely at the Gnostic material in certain cosmological treatises, it describes the attempt of the archons to, quote, rape Eve, unquote. What that means in mythological language is that they intended and attempted to crack into the human genome. They never did so, and they cannot do so. But they did succeed in cracking into the neurological circuitry of the racial vector, that is to say, of a certain small selected group of human animals upon whom they targeted their intrusion. So to, just to reiterate the point I made earlier, how is the archontic infection propagated on Earth today among the many races of people, the different nationalities, ethnicities, and races living in different nations and countries around the world? How is it propagated globally? Well, it is propagated globally on two fronts. In the first case, those who are infected neurologically with the virus are the active agents of corruption, deceit, division, domination, and every form of social evil conceivable goes back to that infected group. Those who are not neurologically infected and genetically deviated by the archonic virus, which is the vast, vast majority of the human population, nevertheless conform to the plans and programs of the infected group due to the fact that the virus has pernicious mimetic qualities. This is premium Gnostic intel. Second point on which I invite you to get clear leads to the conclusion of this little talk. It concerns the nature of the Petri dish of the experiment that is unfolding on the earth. According to the Gnostic mythology, in the great perspective of their narrative, which is called the fallen goddess scenario, what is happening on earth with human animals, human beings, anthropines, and all other animals and all life, all the biota, all the plants and the weather, and all of the mineral world, what is happening on earth in the totality of life is a divine experiment. And as such, it is totally good from its foundation, through its development, to its conclusion. The divine experiment on earth is based on love and freedom. It's an expression of generosity. And many other of those highest moral attributes that human beings identify as something to be admired and something to be acquired. But the Gnostics in their cosmological narrative specified that the intrusion of the archons into this experiment was not their original intention. They did not place the archons in the experiment to test us. That is a false and misleading notion. It came about due to an anomaly. Call it an accident. It came about due to something that was unanticipated. And so, yes, you are living in a divine experiment. 
And at the same time, there is something wrong in the experiment due to the intrusion of this unattended or unanticipated factor, and you, you, to assume the true calling of a human being, have to come to terms with that intrusion. And COVID-19 is the bare-faced revelation of that intrusion. So it's the opportunity to come to terms with it, to recognize it, expose it, and overcome it, and return this experiment to its divine origins, to its original conditions. Gnostics call this event the correction of the Aeon Sophia. It is nothing less than the correction of the errors and illusions suffered by the human species that have brought us to this point. Many wonderful, wonderful discoveries, many truths, many acts of beauty and liberation can come and will come through facing the COVID-19 pandemic nightmare. Many errors can be overcome in the heat of this battle for the future of this precious planet, the setting of the divine experiment. And among these errors to be corrected in the process of Sophia's correction is the error of germ theory which originates with Louis Pasteur. Now the historical facts of the case, which can be found by anyone who cares to look for them, show a that Pasteur rigged the evidence and he falsified the evidence of his laboratory research aimed at proving germ theory. And additionally, he caused the subjects that he had enlisted as guinea pigs in proving his theory to be sick. He poisoned them with arsenic and lead so that they would show certain symptoms that would verify his formula, his hypothesis of germ theory. Now I ask you, look at those two things that Pasteur did, factually known to have done, falsified the evidence and poisoned the subjects to prove his theory. Do you see that being done today? Do you see the statistics about COVID-19 being falsified? And do you see the subjects of COVID-19 being poisoned mentally, physically, psychologically, emotionally, morally, you name it, being poisoned in one way or another so that they exhibit the symptoms of the alleged fictional disease. Yes, you do. It's good to consider Pasteur at this point, and with that consideration, I will include this short talk. Germ theory is one of the many errors. It's a, in part an error and in part a deliberate deceit that can be overthrown and will be overthrown in coming through the COVID-19 nightmare. Speaking as an Austic today, I can assure you that there is nothing in the petri dish of nature which is essentially malignant or malevolent. The microbial life, which is the great majority of life on this planet, is not malignant. There are no malignant microbes. There is no such thing as a virus. The closest thing to what is falsely claimed to be a virus is an exosome, and an exosome is simply a soldier or an agent in the microbial population of the planet 
shared with the human body for the purposes of healing and adaptation, period. So the conclusion is that there is no microbial infection, no viral infection on this planet coming from the natural habitat itself. The Petri dish is not designed in that way. So, is COVID-19 the archontic infection? No. The narrative of COVID-19, the narrative about it, and the essential concept of an infectious germ, which is a fiction, those two factors, focus on that, the narrative and the fiction of COVID-19 are the productions of those who are infected with the archontic virus, which indeed does come from outer space. The authors and the enforcers of the COVID-19 PSYOP are the agents of the archontic infection on this planet. And about their purpose? Well, quite simply, they regard themselves as a transhuman superspecies entitled to possess the entire planet, to control everything that happens in every sphere of life with the option to either enslave or exterminate those in the population who are not obedient to their plan. Ah, but that's pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, even a Gnostic teacher has to address the obvious from time to time.